Hello, this is Jason Robinson from Illustration by Design, and I'm going to start another illustration right now, and it is of British actress Ruth Wilson. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you know who Ruth, Ruth Wilson is. Um, she's kind of a character actress, but um, she, I guess, at least for me anyway, mainly know her from the TV show Luther, which uh, was on for a few years, um, I think around, uh, starting around, hmm, what, 2011, 2012, and it just came back, I think it came back last year for another season, um, but she started that, on that show as sort of a Hannibal Lecter, sort of like serial killer type character, um, and uh, she was in the Lone Ranger movie, um, a few years back with Johnny Depp, and she's been in various other things. I think right now, the latest thing she's been working on was a uh, TV show about her grandmother called Mrs. Wilson. And um, but she's a really good actress, great actress. Um, and she's one. She has the reason I'm drawing her is because she has one of those faces where she can look really hot or really weird or even ugly. Um, I don't know how to describe, describe it. She has a very unique, interesting face. I really, I think she's really attractive, but it's all her roles. <laughs> she looks really odd. Anyway, um, she has an interesting face, so I wanted to draw her. So that is what I'm going to do today, tonight, and uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it, and uh, we'll uh, we'll have fun watching me struggle with it. So anyway. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, if you are, are at Area 51 right now, I want to say hello to you as well. Please tell all the aliens that I said hi. And if you can, please see if you can get a jetpack for me and mail it to me. That would be awesome. I would love to have a jetpack. I've been waiting for decades for it. It's now the 21st century, and the fact that we don't have jetpacks, robot maids, and flying cars, I that is that is criminal. Uh, and I... If there was someone I could, I could go to to complain about it and have someone else arrested for it, I would do so because I I should have a flying car and a jetpack by now. It's that's just that simple. So anyway, um, yeah, hello to all my alien friends at Area Fifty One. Anyway, I'm gonna try to uh, get this image of Ruth Wilson, uh, and uh, I'm gonna now I'm gonna start drawing. So um, yeah. So just hold on. Oh, um, while, while you guys are waiting for me to take my head out of my rump, I will show you the drawing I did of Hawkgirl. Since they did Hawkgirl for Drawn and Quarter Fan Edition last night, or Thursday night, rather. Um, this is a drawing I did of her a few days ago. So you guys can look at that while I get things in order for Ruth Wilson. I'll be right back. And if you haven't already, please hit that like button. I know this is a little boring right now, just waiting for me to get things sorted. But hit that like button, and please share this live stream out, um, and let people know that I'm, that I'm drawing right now. That would be a great help to me, and to the channel in general. Oh, and hopefully you, you subscribe to my channel. I try to live stream at least, eh, at least three times a week. Um, the exact time, <laughs> it varies. 
So, but I'm trying to get to a point where I do this every day or close to every day. I'm not quite there yet. So it's, right now it's about three times a week, sometimes four. It just depends. But please give this video a thumbs up, share it out. Sure. Didn't take too long. <laughs> well, long enough to be boring. So, I apologize. Hopefully, this drawing of Hawk Girl has entertained you while waiting for me. Uh, let me get some water so I can get some of the drink. Ah. Mm. Uh. Excuse me. Pardon me. All right. Let's let's get to drawing. You didn't come here to listen to me prattle about stupidness. All right. Let's see. No one say anything. That's good. Uh, now, move this out of the way for now. I'll probably need it later. Uh, do I have my glasses on? Glasses are on. That's a good thing. Now, now to to measure measure for the for my art. Measure twice. Draw once. There we go. Measure that. Measure that. There we go. Bam, look at that. Should have been an architect. Brilliant, brilliant measuring. Should have been a tailor. Look at that. All right, here we go. Zooming in. Hope you guys don't get seasick. Hold on. Okay, that's good. That's good enough. Hold on. I fix my camera. All right, or move her, move that over. Move this over, so I can see. Move this over, so I can see. All right, then I can start drawing. All right. Now remember what I told you. This woman can look really, really hot. Or really really weird and creepy so <laughs> I'm just telling you ahead of time this warning give me full warning I don't know what it is about her face though but I don't know I find her I, I, I think she's hot but at the same time I admit she looks she can look really creepy when she when she wants to so anyway, let me get drawn ah eyes, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes. How do I start this? It's a wor the worst part about drawing women is, is that you want to do them justice, but that's, that's my biggest fear when I, when I draw, especially women. 
when I draw people in general, yeah, I want to do them justice, but when I draw women especially, it's just like, don't, don't screw her up, because, I mean, even, even when, even when, even if they're not gorgeous, you don't want to make them look worse than they are, so, I kind of, I don't know, I just want to, ah, I guess, I guess doing them justice is the best way I can put it, anyway, I'll try not to screw it up, I'll try my best, I'll try my best not to screw it up, just have to get the general shape of the head right first, Now, hopefully, all you guys are aware of Kyle Ritter's um, comic book, Starblades, um, and it is, uh, it's actually ending today, the, um, the campaign to fund it. It's been, it's been fun funded well over $100,000 now, but if you haven't already, you should probably run out and purchase it on Indiegogo. Because it is looking to be a very, very cool comic book. Sort of, I mean, it's very reminiscent of, at least in, in appearance, my, it reminds a lot of people of uh, Thundercats and Silverhawks, the cartoon from the 1980s. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's a beautifully drawn comic book, what I've seen. So, you should check it out. I also want to keep uh, keep an eye on the, on the time. I started this, eh, I guess, a little after 2, I guess around 2.10 or something. Um, so, I want to get this done in two hours. So, I'm just saying that, that out loud so that <laughs> I, guess, I guess you guys can hold me accountable in a sense. How many people are watching? Two people are watching, so... There won't be that much accountability, but I'm saying it out loud just so that I know that I should keep it in mind. So I'm trying to trying to improve my speed because right now my speed is uh, isn't the greatest. But we'll see what I can do. We'll see what I can do in two hours. Interesting, interesting. And she has such a. Uh, mm, I don't, mm, I don't know, this, this is this is the the artist in me is like loves her odd face for some reason, and it's just like aching to uh, to capture it. <laughs> Sounds weird, but it's true. It's like when you're. When you're an artist, it's like the, a lot of times weird-looking things are attractive. And she, and again, she's not ugly, but she's um ah, it's, it's, I don't know, something about it, something about her face.
Now the key is to draw her face accurately without it going, in, going into a caricature. So that's another goal I have with this. I want to capture her uniqueness. I don't want it to be cartoony. So we'll see. We shall see if I can achieve that. You know, looking at her, you know who she, a lot of times I think, when I see actors and actresses, I try to think of like what character was in, in comic books they'd be a good, they'd be good at, what role that they'd be good playing. Looking at her, <laughs> she kind of, she kind of strikes me as someone who would, who would make a good uh, Cassandra, Cassandra Xavier. Um, I think that's her name. Professor Xavier's, uh, I think it's his twin sister. Um, she, she has like a weird history or something. I think she was, like, she was like a, like a, was she a Miss Carrie Child? I can't remember. I didn't, I didn't read those issues that much, but, um, but she was also very odd looking. And, uh, Ruth Wilson isn't that old. I think she's probably, I think, no, I think she is 37. So, um, but, uh, I think she, her, her face reminds me of that character. some weird reason. Yes, yeah, she's, and, and like I said, yes, she, she is very, very attractive. It's a very strange dichotomy. I guess the word is. I don't know. All right, let's see. Remember, no caricature. And also, watch the time. And also watch proportions as always, so I don't have to erase major parts of her head <laughs> halfway through. Okay, make sure the stream's running okay. Seems to be running running okay. Let me just make sure that it's actually. On the right Wi-Fi. Sorry, I have a tendency to. Uh... Nope, it is right Wi-Fi. Right Wi-Fi. That's good too. All right, cool. So the chances of the stream going kablooey are lessened. I want to just make sure that it is centered somewhat, so you guys can see what's going on. All right, that's pretty good. Kind of good, kind of good, kind of good. All right.
Pablo Romero Art, how you doing? Good seeing you. I just started this live stream eh, about eh, 15, 20 minutes ago. Um, and drawn Ruth Wilson from uh, Luther. She was also in the uh, Lone Ranger movie as the uh, love interest. Starring Johnny Depp. So, she has a very interesting face, so I figured I would draw her. Hopefully, not screw her up. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, Pablo. Pablo, uh, you did that, uh, you did that drawing of, uh, Busty Sidekick, didn't you? Um, several days ago? That was really, really good. Paul Romero says, I'm doing fine, working on a comic page. Awesome. Paul Romero R says, yes, I did. Yeah, if you guys have not subscribed to Paul Romero on YouTube, you should, because he is an awesome artist. And he does awesome art. So if you like awesome art, subscribe to Pablo Romero Art, and he will not disappoint you. I don't want to focus. I want to focus too much on on any one part right now because I don't want to screw up. And uh, after the fact, after spending a lot of time on one area, realize that I've completely misjudged the size and proportions of it. I, I I do that a lot. I get absorbed in like one area of the face, and then I and then I sort of step back and I'm like, ooh, that was wrong. And I just want to avoid that in the future, but I have to consciously force myself not to do it. So that's why I'm telling all you people, all you fine people, just so that I hear myself saying it. It's literally instead of just in my head and it sort of pounds that pounds it home for me so I don't so I don't do it. <laughs> Kind of already seeing it with uh, with these eyes, but we'll. See. Mm. Yeah, I kind of, yeah, kind of did it with. This eye isn't right. I gotta, I gotta just uh, fix it. Uh, Pablo Romero Art says, I need to do more videos. I have an idea for one that's going to be complicated to do and will not get a lot of views because few people will understand. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I, I um, The reason why I do live streams as opposed to um, sort of pre-made videos is that I find pre-made videos extremely hard, hard to make or very um, time-consuming to make. Um, like I had, I have one that I currently in the midst of making it just takes a lot of time for me to put it together and um, because it takes so much time I tend to put it aside for later and then later it ends up being several weeks <laughs> and that's not good so I think uh, unfortunately I think uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think there's any easy way to make videos um, you either just have to pump them out and not worry about it or you have to sort of just be really good at video work and being being able to pump them out really quickly. Because I see these people who put out a video every day, or sometimes you know several times a day, pre-made videos. I'm just like I don't understand how they can how they do that.
I guess after a while, you just uh, once you, once your audience shows that they don't care how um, you know they care more about the, what you're saying than how it how it necessarily looks. Um, I guess at that point, then it makes it easier. So. That's better. That's a little better. That's a little better. Now, let's see if I can get her odd face down. Uh, maybe because all they do is videos. I can't do videos and work on a com, com work in a comic at the same time. Yeah, that's probably true. But I mean, these are people who actually do stuff as well. I mean, that's that's why I watch their videos because they, and not because I mean, they, they do stuff other than make videos. So, um, like there's this guy Alex Steele. He would I, I don't know if he does videos every day or close to every day. Um, but he, he's a blacksmith and he, you know, he, he makes stuff and, uh, it's very interesting work, but it's just, uh, but then he, he does have someone who does his video work for him. Um, so I guess you need, I guess, I guess a lot of these people have helped to do it, but even, even guys like, um, you know, Mike Miller or Ethan Van Skyver, whatever, I mean. They do a lot of a lot of video stuff every day. And I'm just like, how do you how do you pump all that stuff out? And they're working on a comic book, um, so although with Ethan, it's probably it's probably not at this point it's ninety percent uh, YouTube stuff and then ten percent comic book stuff. But yeah, we just we all do what we can. YouTube is not a um, a pathway to uh, to riches for uh, for I would say ninety nine percent of the people who use it. <laughs> At least not an easy way. So. Don't quit your day job if you YouTube.
Yeah, Paolo Mara R says, I don't know how Mike does it. He talks and draws at the same time. I don't either. Well, I know how he does it. Because he spent so many years, decades, at conventions, he's used to talking and drawing at the same time. He's just trained himself to do it because he's had to do it, um, you know, working week, weekend in and weekend out, you know, talking to, uh, talking to fans while he's drawing. Um, that's, I mean, that you have, he, he's had to learn how to do that. So YouTube is kind of an, just a natural extension of that, except the fans are not, um, these fans aren't, aren't in person. They're, they're on the other side of the camera. So he just treats it the same way. You know, he, he's just jabbering about whatever, um, you know, whether, whether it's, uh, you know, arguing with people or, or talking about various news of the, of the day or whatever. And he's he just naturally falls into that into that convention mode where his head's down, he's drawn, focusing on drawing, but at the same time he's focusing and, and being able to hold a, a a conversation with with someone who's who's talking to him, and that's that's a that's a great skill to have. I mean, I'm sure he it's not not something he sort of planned on on being useful to him, but now that he's he's YouTubing and live streaming a lot, I mean it's very useful. Um, I find that very difficult to do. So my brain um, is very bad at multitasking that way. <laughs> it needs to put all this energy in either one thing or the other, um, drawing or holding a coherent conversation and if I try to do both one or both of them suffers usually both all right 235 half an hour has passed and my self-imposed goal is an hour is an hour and a half left. I want to try to get most of this done in two hours. Trying to lay these lines down. So, mm. Come on.
Excuse me. Ah, <coughs> oh. let's see. Pablo Romero Art says, "I just play music on the few streams I made." Yeah, I try to play music too on the homemade on the pre-made ones. Um, are you training for Dawn and Quarter? Yeah, I am actually. Um, in a sense, because it, my my speed is the um. That's the one thing that holds me back during drawn and quartered. It's um and I, I and just in general I need to get faster. I find that um I, I, I mean I see guys like Matthew Weldon okay, especially these three guys. Matthew Weldon, Mike Miller, and Kanan White. And what they can achieve in in, in only two hours and it's like it's obviously physically possible to, to, to draw that fast. Oh, oh, another another guy who's extremely fast and does extremely great work. Two guys, actually. Zach Bradley and um, Alan Alonzo, the How Comics. Uh, all five of those guys are... I, I don't... I don't... I, I don't understand how they can draw so great so quickly. It, it's... It, 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 it's not wiz it's not wizardry, it's not magic. So I know it's possible, but it it frustrates me seeing how long it takes me to draw something that looks like finished art. Um, you know, I, I guess in comparison to them. And I I know you shouldn't compare yourself to other artists, but when it comes to something like you know, a drawing contest, and you have a you have a certain time limit. You have to take in consideration how quickly you're you're, you're actually working, and your how how fast your workflow is, and um, and it's it's not just drawing quarter. I'm 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 extrapolating this into um, extending this to uh, actually working. You know, when you're working on a job, and I work as an artist. I'm, I mean, that's my that's my job. I'm I'm a freelance artist. Drawing quickly um, by, you know, meeting your deadlines or beating your deadlines, preferably, is 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 a is a money factor. I mean, the faster you draw, if you're able to put out high quality work fast, that means more money in your pocket and uh, and better, you know, a happier client, better referrals for future jobs. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So it can only benefit me to sort of force myself, train myself, whatever, to be be a faster artist. And I would like to be a faster artist. It's just that you know I'm not <laughs> for for whatever reason. Whether it's uh, the fact that I get wrapped up in whatever I'm drawing and then waste time that way or, or it's just certain things I, I do um, while I'm drawing that take more time than they should. Maybe I focus too much on a pencil drawing and uh, instead of just doing a rough sketch. I mean a lot of these guys are really good at drawing straight from the pen. So they only need really a, a rough outline and then they do most of their detail work on the pen side, on the inking side of the of the artwork, um, I can't do that. I, I, I inking to me is very difficult, so I need a very a very strong guide, um, meaning pencils. When you know when I'm when I'm inking my work, I need I need to know what I'm going to be inking. I can't just sort of make it up as I go along. Um, I'm not I'm not uh, confident enough in my in my ink inkmanship to uh <laughs> to do that so um whereas a lot of these guys are i mean mike miller matthew weldon they're, they're to my mind they're master inkers i mean they're they're brilliant with with inks so they they i mean matthew weldon you, can, you can't even see his pencils when he when he does them it's only when he starts inking that you can actually see what he's drawing half the time you're looking at it, it's like what is he doing and it just looks like he's drawing straight from his pen um I mean, he's he's really really good, and same it's the same with Mike Miller. Mike Miller is a fantastic, brilliant inker. So, um, yeah, I think their their inking ability 
is is sort of what really helps them to do really great work fast. Um, you know, they may spend. I mean, I don't know how much how much time Matthew Weldon spends on a on just pencils. I mean, what ten minutes? <laughs> And then he uh, he goes straight to inks. I don't know. Um, anyway, yes, I am training for drawn and quartered um, in the short term. In the long term, I'm training to just become a faster artist in general, so that it will uh, it will re result in in more me, me doing more work in less time. Ideally, I I want to get to a point where I can <laughs> I can do work. In two hours, that would normally take me five hours to do. And usually, the um, stuff I do on drawn and quartered, you know, I finish it later on. It usually takes me about five hours to uh, to pencil and ink. One of those things for drawn and quartered total. Um, and I I would like to get that down to two hours. That would be nice. That would be nice. But whether I can or not, I don't know. It's two forty-five right now, so I'm drawn for about forty minutes. This is where I am. I should probably be faster than this. But, again, portraiture, eh, might be a little different. I mean, you're trying to draw, make an accurate image of someone. And, uh, again, I could be faster. I could be faster. But I need to, I need to consciously force myself to do it. And not spend too much time obsessing over details. Romero Art says, I also want to be faster, especially with comics. When I feel that I... Hmm, I'm sorry, I can't... I'm going to have to go back to the my tablet to see what you're saying. It's hard for me to read my phone. <laughs> I apologize. Um, when I feel that I take too much time with layouts. Um, well, it just depends. I mean, layouts, with comic book stuff, I do layouts ahead of time. So I do, I do the thumbnails first. So when it comes to actually drawing the page, the layouts are already in front of me, and I just sort of copy them. I, I don't do layouts from page to page. I'll, if I have like a 24-page comic book, or, or a 10-page comic book, or a 5-page comic book, however long the comic book is, I do the layouts first. Make sure that the flow works from page to page to page through the end. And then after that, then I start drawing the actual pages, individual pages. So, um, you know, if you if you have, say, 30 days to do a comic book, you spend the first two days just doing the layouts for that, for that comic book. Once the layout's done in those first two days, then you just spend the, the other 28 days just drawing each page. So it shouldn't take... If you're spending too much time with layouts, I mean that that would be a, a good way to, to do it. Just just do all the layouts at once. Um, you know, small. I mean thumbnails. I don't mean full page layouts. I mean just do thumbnails of how each page should look in terms of the the, the panels and everything. And then after that, it's just uh, just drawing the, drawing it large and the you know, final artwork. That'd be one way. But I'm sure there are a thousand ways to. Uh, to do layouts sort of quickly, um, but that's that's how I tend to do it. Because if I if I did the layouts page by page, that would take me a long time too. Because I I, I wouldn't be thinking about the next page until after I finished the previous page, and then I'd be wasting I'd be wasting time trying to trying to figure that stuff out. Um, and like you said, that that can take up a lot of time. Uh, 
All right. Paul Romero Art says, I kind of did that with this set of five pages I'm doing now. I took a couple of days to do layouts this week, and now I'm doing page four. I wish I could do two more pages a day. You mean two or more pages a day finished art or layouts? Um, I mean, the layout shouldn't take you that long. I mean, uh, I guess it depends on what you're working on, but I, I guess I found that layouts, I mean, I could, if I had like a a five-page comic book. Um, I mean, I, I could probably do the layouts in an hour or two. It's, 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 um, that that's not the time-consuming part for me. I mean, it's just. Um, I mean, what I'm talking. I mean, again, I mean, I'm talking about thumbnails. Um, you know, it's a finished art that uh, 
it takes me a lot of time. I mean, if you could do two, <laughs> I mean, if you could do two or more pages a day, finished art, I mean, that's, dang. And that's like, those are, those are like Jack Kirby speeds. <laughs> or John Byrne speeds. I heard that John Byrne also did uh, two pages a day back when he was doing Fantastic Four and, uh, and X-Men and uh, Captain America back in the late 70s, early 80s. And that guy was a, I think that was a freaking workhorse. All right, let me. I think I got pretty much, pretty much got her down, pretty much. This is the this is pretty much her rough outline of her face. Now I have to go in for the details for the let's see if I can hmm. Let me stand up, make sure that's nah, off. It is off, it is off. So says I'm talking about finished art <laughs> yeah man if you could do two pages of finished art in a day my hat is off to you I mean most guys struggle just doing one page of finished art a day and for me I could do a page of finished art in a day I'm talking this is just I'm just talking about pencils um, penciling and inking I don't know if I could but penciling and inking would probably take me two days because again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a good enough anchor to 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 draw finished art with a pen. That that's uh, if I tried doing that, it'd be a disaster. Because right now, a good seventy five percent of my of my artwork is erasing because I make so many mistakes. Me trying to. Uh, to do a, like a rough layout and then I mean like Ethan Van Skyver does I couldn't do that I don't have enough confidence in uh, in my ink ink to do that I mean just it's just it wouldn't work and I, I think it, it it's again it's something that takes a lot of practice to gain that confidence and uh, yeah I just don't have it at this point one day maybe who knows but I think it's something that, that, again, you would have to consciously practice doing. You'd have to force yourself to do um, to, to, to gain that sort of ability, that confidence in your, in your, in your inking ability. And it's, just, it's, and it, and it's through experience, too. I mean, guys like Ethan have been doing it for decades. Um, you know, guys like uh, um, uh, Mike, Mike Miller been doing it for you know since the 90s as well um matthew weldon is very is pretty young i mean he's only in his 30s but um he uh i mean that guy's got so much talent um i i, I love i love watching him create and draw so but all these guys i mean it's it's, it's i think it's good to try to 
to see these guys and glean what you can from them. And I mean, I find them very inspiring to me. I, I, you know, I mean, all these artists are, I mean, including Pablo Romero art. I mean, if you, I mean, Pablo Romero art has a really cool style. Um, it's, it's sort of like an eighties, um, pop art look, not, not comic books so much, but like, uh, like Nagel, Patrick Nagel look, um, you know, sort of that graphic Miami Vice, um, classic eighties poster look. And, uh, I think that's very, very cool. All right, now getting into the eye. Getting into the eye. Let's see if I can do this without messing it up. Pablo Romero Art says, thanks. Huh, you're very welcome. It's true. It is true. I'm simply speaking the truth. You are a very talented artist. So, hopefully everyone will, uh, will hear this and go subscribe to your channel, as they should. Check out more of your work. What comic book are you working on, by the way, Pablo? Um, is it your own stuff, or are you doing? Are you illustrating with working with someone else, or or what? Inquiring minds want to know. It's 3.02 right now. Uh, roughly an hour left. According to my pre self imposed deadline. Might go over it. We'll see. We'll see how far we get. What I don't want to do is spend an additional live stream working on this. I just want to. I want to try to get these portraits down in one live stream. So it's just uh, just takes up a lot of time. I think a lot of that is again me not sort of paying attention to mistakes I'm making and uh, sort of jumping the gun. 
in a lot of ways with things. Getting too focused on one area and not noticing mistakes until I've finished and then I have to do a race and start over. So hopefully I'm, I'm avoiding that by making sure the drawing is pretty correct just in the skeleton stage, the outline stage, so that when I, by the time I get to the details, I, um, the foundation is already solid, so I don't, I don't have to erase major parts anymore. I think it's so excited. I want, I want to get to the, to the dessert of, uh, of doing the detail work, and I don't, I haven't finished my peas yet. <laughs> done the necessary artwork to make sure it's a solid drawing. Um, Pablo Romero Art says, I'm working on a comic called Cyborg USA. It's going to be on Indiegogo someday, I think. It's something I'm doing for a guy called Rob Casey. I'm guessing that's how you say his name, Rob Casey. Cool, Nate. Um, <laughs> Pablo Romero R says, is she an old woman? She is not an old woman. That's the thing. And that's why I wanted to draw her. She has a very, very interesting, interesting face. This is Ruth Wilson. She's 37 years old and she is a British actress. And she has a type of face where she can look really hot or really old and weird. And the drawing, the picture I'm drawing from, she doesn't look... She, she still kind of looks hot, but she looks more than anything. She looks weird. She has a weird look on her face. And because her face is kind of rub rubbery, that kind of comes through too. I mean, she it looks like she has like a sunken chin. And she doesn't really, but she kind of does. It's, it's hard to explain. I'd have to show you the actual photo. But I don't really want to show it to you. <laughs> because I, you can look her up on, on, uh, on Google. Her name is Ruth Wilson. And... Uh, and she's been, I know her mainly from the TV show Luther, um, but she, she was in the Lone Ranger uh, movie a, yeah, several years back with Johnny Depp, and, and she's a character actor. She, she, does, she plays different types of characters. Um, some of them are, are hot sort of, uh, you know, seductresses or murderers, um, or she plays like sort of like um, spinsters or sort of... A, dowdy old women, not old women, but sort of like, you know, that sort of character. Anyway, but no, she's not old, <laughs> despite my drawing. Um, and I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying not to make it a caricature. So she kind of looks like this. Um, but a lot of these lines are more accurate and less like she has five zillion wrinkles, you know, the wrinkles of a 80 year old and she look more like she actually does at least, at least that's my goal it's one of my goals with this drawing but that's that's why I wanted to draw her because she has a very unique face and I and I like that that's, that's one of the things I like about her her how how interesting her face is um, so I don't know. I find it very. I don't know if she's. I find her face very appealing for some weird reason. Romero R says, found the picture. She does have, she does like a weird expression. It's coming out good. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's, um, 
but again, I mean, if you look at other pictures of her, she actually she actually looks good. Um, and it's it's just uh, she just has one of those one of those faces. She um, she's definitely not. I mean, at least to me, I don't find her ugly at all. It's just she just has a very a very unique face. So. Oh, Romero Art says, yeah, she is not ugly. Yeah, she's not. So my goal is to, like I said before, do her justice. I don't, I want her, I want to capture her weirdness, but I don't want to make her look ugly. That's the balance. That's the, uh, that's a fine balance I'm trying to achieve. Three eleven. It's been a, a little over an hour since I started. Let's see how much I can get done by by four oh five, which is when I that'll be two hours. Four four oh five. I need one of those chairs Mike Miller has, one of those uh, gamer chairs. My back. Either that or get one, of, um, get a chair that, that you know, has a, one of the pneumatic chairs that goes up and down. <laughs> of course, I probably play with it too much. Spend all my time <laughs> spinning on it while going up and down, but my back is kind of. Start screaming after a little while.
Pablo Romero R says, I have a regular office chair. It has the up and down thing. Yeah, those things are great. I love them. I used to work at the National Enquirer um, up until eh, about four years ago. And um, <laughs> they had those chairs. That was the best part of the job. I used to like just just uh, spin in those chairs while pulling on the handle and going up and down. It was awesome. It's like being on a amusement park ride all day. <laughs> So, if I got one, I don't know how much art I'd actually get done. I spent all my time uh, playing with the chair. I'm very easily amused. It doesn't take much. <laughs> all it takes is a chair that goes up and down and spins. I'm happy. See, I'm starting to get obsessed with the nose now. <laughs> and it's slowing me up. It's slowing me down here. Gotta just do it. Just do it. Get it done. Get it done and move on. I'm messing up, I'm messing up, I'm messing up.
Oh. Paul Romero says, I bought it a few months ago. His chair. Before that, I used a plastic chair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta... Gotta have to put it in the budget. Spinny chair. Spinny hydraulic chair. Three twenty, three twenty. Eastern Standard Time. Your time may vary depending on where you live. Let me get her other eye. She has very, very striking eyes. They're green. They're kind of like, remind me of a cat's eyes. Probably because she's kind of scary looking. So, <laughs> scary looking women always remind me of cats because you don't know what they're going to do. Are they going to be nice to you or are they going to kill you and then play with your corpse? Eh, either or. 50-50, you never know. I think that's why Ruth Wilson plays very good uh, sort of psychopaths. She has that look. That look of crazed intensity. That's correct. No. So I can get this. Oh, have you guys heard that, um, I guess with uh, the CW shows, the superhero shows, they got, um, what's his name, from Smallville to play Superman again, or, or at least to play Clark Kent. Um, can't remember his name. The guy who played Clark Kent on Smallville years ago. Um, I guess they're going to have him, Brandon Roth, playing the um, from Superman uh, Returns. Superman Returns, was that it? Yeah, Superman Returns from, I think, 2008. Um, and he also plays the Adam on the CW shows. He's going to play the uh, Kingdom Come Superman. And then um, uh, the, the guy who plays Superman on the CW, uh, Tyler Hot, Holt, Holt, Holt something? I can't remember <laughs> his name. But, yes, yeah, so they're going to have three different guys playing, playing various versions of Superman on their uh, upcoming Crisis on Infinite Earths storyline uh, at the end of December. That's pretty cool. Wish I could remember the Smallville um, guy's name, though. For some reason, I can't. I'm hoping that he's actually going to play Superman and not just Clark Kent, because that was one of the things that sort of annoyed me about Smallville. Um... I know that Smallville was supposed to be 
Clark Kent before he became Superman, but it was supposed to culminate in the finale with Clark Kent becoming Superman. That was supposed to be that was supposed to be the very last episode, and uh, the actor refused to wear the suit. They had the suit ready for him, but he just didn't wear it. Um, Paul Romero R says that drawing is looking really good. Thank you. It's 4:20 in Argentina. Okay, so you're just an hour ahead of me. Is that where you are, Pablo Romero, in Argentina? So you're you're an hour ahead of me. Um, that's cool. Good. I don't feel so alone then, being up all night. <laughs> need, more, need more light so I can see. Putting my glasses on would help as well. But uh, yeah, so it's pr it's pretty cool that they they're able to get uh, three actors who have played Superman to uh, to show up for this event. I mean, I'm, I've kind of given up on the CW shows for the most part. I think the only ones I still watch are Arrow and The Flash. The other ones have gotten way too political and sort of uh, obnoxiously. Um, politically correct for me, but the Flash and, and Arrow are still fairly decent um, shows, or have been rather. So I still watch them. Supergirl though is like garbage, <laughs> but it's it's cool that uh, they're gonna have this event. I'm gonna I'll I'll, I'll try to watch it. Try to check it out. I haven't, I haven't, although I haven't really, I saw the first few episodes of, of Black, uh, Black Lightning, it just didn't, just didn't grab me, for whatever reason. And I like the character, um, but, yeah, I don't know. Shadow's getting in my way. It's hard for me to see. Okay, 327. I have about half an hour left. Let's see how much I can... Well, I don't know. At the very least, I'll get her most of her features in. So... And then I can just, uh, I'll continue working on the rest, um, but I won't, I won't have to sweat over it as much once I get her, her main features down. I'll have less to worry about. Pablo Romero R says, never liked Smallville, but also not a fan of Superman. Yeah, Smallville was okay. I mean, I, I'm i a fan of Superman. Um, I mean, I, I love, I mean, Christopher Reeve and George Reeves, um, the uh, the Superman from the 1950s, are easily my favorite. The, I mean, favorites, I mean, they, they kind of tie for me as, as sort of, because I think both of them really embodied the Superman of their time. Um... I thought they both did a fantastic job as a character. 
Um, and I, so I like Superman, but um, Smallville, it was annoying because they didn't, he wasn't actually, he was just Clark Kent and he wasn't Superman. And it was the same thing with, um, although to a lesser extent, with Gotham. I, 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 I don't like, well, actually, to, it, actually to, probably to more of an extent with Gotham, because they, they didn't even have Bruce Wayne with, you know, doing any of the stuff that Bruce Wayne does as Batman. I, I don't like shows that are what I consider um, superhero T shows, if that makes sense. Sort of like a a quote unquote <laughs> I don't even want to say um, you know cock tease, but um, you know, it, it where it's it's a show that has a peripheral um, association with a superhero, but doesn't actually show that superhero. I mean, it, it's, it's sort of like a, a, a half-assed way to, to make a superhero show without actually showing the superhero. I don't like shows like that. I don't, shows like Gotham where it's Batman before, you know, when he was a kid. I don't care about Batman when he was a kid because he's not Batman. Yeah, or Krypton. Oh, it's about Superman's great-great-grandfather. I don't care. I care about Superman. I don't care about his, his grandfather's uh, barber or anything else or or um there's a new show on on epics called pennyworth about alfred <laughs> um batman's butler before he was batman's butler there's alfred when he was in his like mid-20s it's like i don't care about alfred in his mid-20s um shows like that don't really thrill me um smallville was 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 an okay show it, it was pretty good um Mainly because they, it, even though it wasn't Superman per se, it was still Clark Kent. He still had all of his powers. He was still fighting crime or fighting monsters or whatever he was fighting. Um, so it was basically basically had, had ninety percent of the trappings of Superman without Superman. Um, so it was it was a decent show. Special effects were okay. Um, some of the characters were annoying as heck. I like one character I hated was was Chloe, sort of Clark Kent's uh, Lois Lane when he was a teenager. I mean, she was made up for the show. Um, you know, in the comics it was Lana Lang, Lana Lang, but for the show they didn't have Lana Lang for some stupid reason. They they made up a new character named Chloe Sullivan, um, and I hated her. She was uh, just annoying as heck. Um, and now the woman who who played played Chloe in Smallville. Now she, she, she's been arrested for, uh, for being part of a, of a sex cult and enslaving and branding, like with a, with a, with a hot iron, like branding, like several women and, and enslaving them into this sex cult. Um, and now, now she's, uh, she's supposed to be sentenced sometime this month. <laughs> so my instincts were right. Chloe was evil. I'm very, I'm very happy to be, to be, uh, vindicated in my hatred of Chloe all those years on Smallville um <laughs> but um but you know, overall Smallville was it was a decent show and it, and it did lay the foundation for what we have now with the CW um you know the, it, it introduced a lot of sort of early versions of of the DC universe I mean it had like the flash it had like you know uh like Bart Allen I mean, the, the continuity was all screwed up. I mean, but it had Bart Allen. It had uh, Oliver Oliver Queen as Green Arrow. It had um, you know young Aquaman. Um, I think at one point they were planning on having like a like a young Bruce Wayne in there, but they never did it. Um, they had uh, Booster Gold, Blue Beetle showed up. And they, had, they had a lot of a lot of you know pretty mainstream characters in there. Um, but, um, and it lasted a long time. It lasted, I think, 10 years, I think. It started in 2001, I believe, and then it lasted until, I think, 20, 2011. So, yeah, it had a good, it had a good run. 
Yeah, a good run. And then at the and the last episode, like I said, I mean he, you know, he he's in Metropolis and he he becomes Superman, but he never put on never put on the costume. I think that one shot of him opening up his his shirt and you see the S underneath it, and then and then the rest of the scene is just like a blue blur, and he flies up to a to a to save some some airplane or something, or a, or a balloon or a dirigible or something, and uh, but they, they never show him in a full costume. I mean, so he's always shown from like the the shoulders up, which is sort of like a lame thing. Um, Pablo Romero R says, why don't just why don't they just do a Batman show? Well, the thing I think is copyright reasons. Um, I don't think they have the the right to do a Batman TV show. I think that's the main reason why they, they haven't done it. Uh, they've always done shows that hinted at Batman, but I don't think they're allowed to have a show that a live action show that actually shows Batman in it. That's why you have you've had shows like Birds of Prey and Gotham and now. Batwoman, which is coming out, but none of them have have Batman in it. Um, oh, then you yeah, have that that new show Titans. Um, that's on the DC um, streaming service, and there's Bat- Bruce Wayne is in it, um, but he's an old man. He's he's not dressed as Batman. So um, I think they're trying to find various ways to have the character in these shows, but without actually showing him and violating whatever copyright infringement things are going on behind the scenes. I don't know. It's it's, it's all this weird legal stuff. <laughs> but I that I, I think that's the that's the that's the only reason why they haven't done a Batman show. Because Batman is you know, it's money in the bank. It's probably the most popular superhero out there. So, Let me get in here with Ruth, Ruth Wilson. All right, that's good. I was trying to think. How was the best way to start doing this shadow? Um, I guess just jump in. Just jump in.
three people are watching. Very cool. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks for your patience. If you like this drawing and this live stream, please, please, please give this give this video a thumbs up and share it out to your friends. Be a big help to the channel. And hopefully, people watching this in the future will also give this video a thumbs up and share it out. So that in a million years, when people are watching this video, it will have a gazillion thumbs up and be shared all across the universe. That'd be cool. So share it and like it. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate it. Let's see, it's uh, 340 right now. And no, this is not a beer. <laughs> it's shading. Hopefully it will, it will improve with time. Those other two people are silent. <laughs> this is Pablo Romero art. Yeah, that happens. Um, you know, if if one person talks, I'm um, I'm happy. I'm surprised. So um, you know, and actually, one of those two people is probably me because I know that I have a window that's open. Um, so, but I mean, there may be other people in the chat. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how YouTube reads it. If they if they read the person, the, the account of the person who is streaming as one of those people watching it. It may or may not. I'm not sure. But I think in general, I think in general, most people are tend to be, they tend to enjoy watching a stream without actually, or listening to a stream without actually interacting with it, because you take a even a, even a popular stream. I mean, I've seen streams with over a thousand people in it, and you'll probably only get ten percent of the people actually interacting with uh, interacting with the uh, with the with the person running the stream, saying something, saying hello or whatever, um, Pablo says, "I think they don't count you." Okay, well, that, even so, um, you know, if there's three people here, and you're one of them, and they only, you know, say 10% of the people interact with you, interact with the stream. Right now, I have 33% of the people interacting with the stream, so I'm already ahead of the curve. So that's good. Um, <laughs> that's good. So I'm happy that that you yourself. Are, are saying hello Pablo and uh, and making me making me feel not so alone I appreciate it thank you very much and hopefully at some point the other people watching watching the stream will say hello as well so that 
it'll be even more fun. The more people, more people who interact and uh, say hi, the better. So I encourage everyone to do that. If nothing else, just to let everyone know that you're here. Hey, Gus Tyler Bush is here. Awesome. Oh, man, five people are watching now. Awesome. Fantastic. Hope you guys stick around. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, just generally hang out and help make this live stream more fun. Pablo Romero Art has been carrying, doing the heavy lifting of keeping this live stream entertaining for the past, ah, almost two hours now. I greatly appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed to Pablo Romero Art, you should do so post haste. He is a fantastic artist and deserves your support as well.
Hey, Ignition's here. How you doing? Six people here now. Fantastic. Good seeing you. Insomnia is catching. Yes, it is. I was watching. Uh, I was watching the Friday night auctions. And then, I was, then I was watching uh, Kyle Ritter's final night of uh, for his campaign Starblades, and then I had to do my own live stream. So I'm glad you guys are still up. I appreciate you guys showing up, and uh, hope you guys will give this video a thumbs up. So. More the merrier. If you can, share this video, this live stream, to your friends. Let them know that I am currently drawing Ruth Wilson and that I would appreciate their support. <laughs> it's late, I'm babbling. So, I should be drawing. Uh, I'm trying not to mess up this drawing, but come on, stay. Ah, frustrating. Ignition says, uh, looks great. Uh, Andy Dave Comics is here. He says he's been stream hopping all night. Cool. Says Ruth is looking good too. Yeah, howdy, Andy Dave Comics. Make sure to smack that like button.
I'm giving Ruth a beard here, so <laughs> she's gonna need a shave. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. She's not the bearded lady at the circus. She's not a carny. She's an actress. Two totally different things. Well, kind of. They're, they're, they're distant cousins. Gustavo Bush says, I just shared this on Twitter. Everyone else, please do that. Yes, please do that. Paul Romero R says, first I was at Brian Shear's live stream, then went to Mike's, and now I'm here. Awesome. Thank you very much, Pablo Romero. I'm used to being up late working. Yeah, so am I, Pablo. Bad habit I got into in uh, college. Oh, great. You finished the page. Fantastic. Eight people watching. Even more awesome. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I appreciate it. Please give this live stream a thumbs up. Do it for my, for my poor insomnia and uh, for all the people who, uh, who, are, who are spending their time watching this live stream. I appreciate all your support. <laughs> and I'm babbling again. But I do appreciate you guys hanging out. Three fifty eight. It's almost two hours since I started. So Am I getting faster? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. Um, but I am gonna finish this today. So I'm gonna finish this during this live stream. So I'm gonna try to move this along as quickly as possible without hurting the actual drawing. Hold on one second. I'll be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. Paul Romero R says it's our time to talk. Yeah, go ahead. Talk.
Hey, Rock, Mock Rocks, how you doing? Good seeing you. I'm thinking I should try to do another page. Wow, cool. Yeah, Pablo, Pablo Mero is uh, on a roll here. He's drawing like a madman. Alright, it's 4.06. It's been two hours since I started this drawing. So, not finished yet, but I've got a good, good chunk of it completed. So, I'm just going to keep drawing and finish it. Oh, so I'm going to be on uh, Hope Fire's live stream later on tonight. I think around 11 o'clock Saturday evening. So look for me there as well. There'll be a bunch of other artists who are we're all going to be drawing something. I think uh, Hope Fire is, has is going to be is working on a putting together some sort of web comic, and so we're going to be drawing her characters tonight. Um, so again, it's going to be. I think 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So just go go from there. You know, um, in terms of what time it'll be where you are. In Pablo Romero's neck of the woods, it'll be midnight. So. Oh, Romero says, looks really good. It's a lot for two hours. I uh, says, yeah, she asked me to go also. So I might be there. Oh, cool. Great. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Um, is this a lot for two hours? I, I, is it? I don't know. Um, I, could, I, could, I could do better. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Um, I mean, it's a lot like my comic book art. It's, it's like... I, I know I could go faster, it's just a question of figuring out the best way to do it without hurting the quality of, of the artwork. I know with comic book work, is that's always, a, again, a, a fine line. It's, you know, how fast can I go and still have the artwork look professional and acceptable? Um, but there's a difference between looking acceptable and professional and satisfying you as an artist. So that's that's also another line you have to, <laughs> another fine line you have to sort of balance. You know, it's, it you know it might uh, it's good enough for print, but can you let it go as an artist, as an example of your work? And that's something I always have to keep in mind. You know, it has to get done. So, and it's easier for me to do that when it's, when I procrastinate and I'm on deadline, that's really easy for me to let it go, you know? But when I have plenty of time, can I still work fast? That's, that's what I would like to achieve. I would like to achieve I'd like to get to a point where I can I can work really fast when, I, when I'm not on a hard deadline and be able to accomplish more because I, right now if I if I don't have a hard deadline like looming I tend to procrastinate and then I um, I waste time I don't want to waste time I want I want to get more done in, in less time 
that's that's sort of my personal goal. So stuff like this is good practice for me. Stuff like drawing a quarter is good practice for me. Um, I just wanna I just wanna be able to increase my productivity and be more be more efficient. So I think most artists are like that. I mean they, they would like yeah, well, I think most artists would love to be able to do great work in less time. It's just figuring out a way to do that. You know, because we, we enjoy the process of drawing, the process of creating art, and just the process itself, you know, makes us prone, because we enjoy it so much, we're prone not to want it to end. So we sort of drag it out. At least that's that's what it's like for me. <laughs> it's like I don't want I don't want to stop drawing, so I'm just gonna keep. <coughs> I'm just gonna make it last as long as possible. Ghost Tyler Bush says, cool, I, I read a Pope Fire comic, especially with you guys as art. Oh, I would read a Pope Fire comic, especially with you guys as artists. Pablo Romero Art says, I try not to waste time these days. Yeah, I mean, time is valuable, and I want to get a lot done, but, you know, I waste time, unfortunately. Time, the one thing we can never have enough of, I can never buy more of, precious and fleeting. Yes, mock rocks. Um, Pomp of Bob says, I always wanted them to do a series based on a character... On her character from Luther. Yeah, I know. Yeah, she, her character is really, really cool. Um, for those of you who don't watch Luther or haven't watched it, she plays sort of like a Hannibal Lecter serial killer type character um, who's in love with Luther, the, the main detective on the show. And he's kind of infatuated with her, too. And, and uh, Luther's played by Idris Elba. It's a really good show. Um, it's on BBC, I think. Um, See, Mark Frost says, uh, oh, he's saying hi to Bob. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, she's a really good actress. I, I, I enjoy her, her acting. So, hopefully. I, I hope she gets better known here in America. I mean, she's done American things, American roles, but not major roles. So, but maybe that will change in the future. Who knows? We'll see.
Mm. Combo Pasta is great show. What, this one? Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. Or are you talking about something else? Probably talking about some other show. <laughs> um, probably Luther. Um, Moxrock says, uh, working on a project, I'm preparing to look at the time. LOL. Pablo Romero R says, I think I wouldn't be drawing, I won't, wouldn't be drawing another page. Uh, Moxrock says, think I'll be pulling a Gandalf the Green. Gandalf the Green? What the heck is that? I know Gandalf the Green, and Gandalf the White. What is Gandalf the Green? That's something I, is that some token book I have not read yet? Might be from the Silmarian, who knows. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever gotten through that entire book. It's kind of a chore. Yeah, Radish Gas was, was the green. Yeah, that's what I thought, Compa Bob. Radish Gas liked his, uh, liked his, uh, his pipe weed. <laughs> thought that was pretty funny in the movie. Ah, okay. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Alright, I'm getting I'm getting the hang of this. Starting to be able to starting to decipher these lines I laid down earlier. It's like why'd I put that line there? Now I zoomed out. And it's like, ah, that's why I put that line there. I understand. I'm starting to understand my own my own visual shorthand here. Papa Boss says, turn in your nerd card mocks. <laughs> Mock Rock says, I was being polite because I know that uh, illustration by design was not born on 420. My nerd card is intact. Gandalf had a pipe. Oh, Mock Rock is inferring that uh, Gandalf himself liked the, uh, liked the weed. Actually, I think based on the movie, he kind of, he, he did. Um... Didn't they infer that the um, that the the weed <laughs> that he was smoking was in fact wacky tobacco? I think they inferred that in one of the movies. But it was funny. It was funny. And no, I was not born on 420. <laughs> in fact, my birthday was about a what? Yeah, it was a week ago. So. Friday the 13th. Lucky day, lucky day. And my name's Jason. So. Doubly lucky.
Hmm. Let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> Combo Boss says, yes, Saruman said, told him he was using too much. <laughs> oh, Mothrax says, people say the same of me. Ouch. Um, Mothrax says, happy birthday, illustration by design. Thank you very much. <laughs> Combo Boss says, you can never do too much. Oh, man, sheesh. I don't know about that. You might be able to do too much. Too much, too much of the weed. You might be able to do too much. I have never partaked myself. I am a, I am a teetotaler. For the most part. I have, I, I have, I, I have been known to drink the, uh, the odd, um, what is it called? It's, uh, Shmirnoff Ice once in a while. About twice a year I'll buy I'll buy a six pack of Smirnoff ice, which is basically just a wine cooler. <laughs> I'll drink half a bottle and then I'll fall asleep. Because I am a lightweight. So I probably would not do well with the uh, with the Mary Jane. My crush says, I try, Bob, I try. Uh, my crush says, I haven't drank in 25 years. That's good. Yeah. I've never been a fan of alcohol. It's I, I, I'm a very, um, in terms of the stuff that I eat and drink, if it doesn't taste good to me, I don't do it. I don't, I have no, I'm not the type of person who, who has any interest in building, a, you know, acquiring, acquiring a taste for something. If my taste buds tell me that something tastes like garbage, I don't try it again. I don't want to. So alcohol has always had a really nasty taste to me. Um, the only alcohol I've ever liked is alcohol that is sweet and has some sort of fruity taste to it. So like beer, never liked beer. It's always tasted like goat piss <laughs> to me. Um, or it's just been so watered down it wasn't even worth drinking. Um, uh, you know, some, some, like I said, like, um, Shmirnoff Ice is sweet, it's, I mean, it's, it was very pleasant to drink, um, and, uh, what type of wine do I like? I, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't drink wine, really, but if I drink wine, oh, Moscato, I like Moscato wine, um, because, again, it's very sweet, so, my tongue likes it, if it, if it tastes good in my taste buds, I enjoy it, but, yeah, so things like, like smoking, or, yeah, you know, whether it's tobacco or, or marijuana, it's just like, ah, yeah, it never, yeah, never appealed to me because it just doesn't taste good. So never, never had an interest in doing it. But it's the same thing with coffee. I love the way coffee smells. I hate the way it tastes because it's it's so bitter. I never, ah, yeah, it's just nasty to me. My wife loves it. She loves coffee, but I can't. I can't, I can't really stomach it. All right. Let me get back to Ruth.
Alright, let's see. Why is this game nah, just slipping? And it's going off camera. That's not good either. You can keep it in frame, or the viewers won't like that. Let's see here. Get back into it. Nine people are watching. Fantastic. Thank you very much, everybody, for your support. Hope you're enjoying this live stream. And I am missing a lot of chat. And I go back into the chat to see what's going on. Um, Combo Boss says, I gotta st quit screwing around, get more videos on my channel. Last real one I did was the unboxing of Kyung's book. Oh, you got Kyung's book already? Oh, man. I haven't gotten it yet. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for it. Hopefully, I'll get it soon. Same with uh, Cyber Frog and all the other ones I've been waiting on. Um, Mocktrox says, I wish I had time, but life got too crazy here. I didn't hear anything once I left Discords. Um, I hope it is as fun as Vamp was. Maybe next time I can fit it in after I move. Bob, you sing? Says Mocktrox. Combo Boss says, oh. Only in the shower and badly. <laughs> Mocktrox says, Chester's a good guy. I wish he had more time to just chill. He's a fascinating guy. Yeah, he is. He's a... I'm surprised he has as much time as he does to uh, to do everything that he does with uh, with uh, YouTube and comics book, comic books and comic skate and all that stuff. I mean, it's re I'm, or it's, he's a really cool guy. Um, great asset to the community. Um, 
and I mean, and he doesn't draw, he doesn't write. Well, he, I guess he does. He, he has written some things, but um, I mean, for someone who's, who's mainly just a fan, I mean, he's like Edwin Boyette. He he, he invests a lot of time into uh, into the comp in, into comic book fandom and trying to make things great for fans. Um, you know, for no money. I mean, he he's a he and Edwin I have a lot of respect for. I mean, they're really really cool guys. Um, Combo Boss says, "Yeah, I always uh, put the Hangouts link in my in all my streams. Streams are always more fun with other people. Yeah, they are. I wish I could include other people in streams like this, but I can't because it's my cell phone camera. I can't do Hangouts or anything or um, OBS or um, there, and there's no there's no Streamyards app um, that you can use for your mobile device. So yeah, unfortunately." Um, Mock Rock says, I, I don't know if you did. I got a friend who has a karaoke show every other week, so you're as talented as me. Um, <laughs> Combo Boss says, I sing like a witch in a blender. Um, and then he agrees, Chester's a good guy, always a good time on, on his streams. Yeah, yeah, seriously, yeah. Very cool, very cool guy. He he and and uh, what's his name? Um, Booster, Booster Kiwi. Fun, really funny guy. I, I I like I like both of them a lot, and they're a good they're a good duo. Um, they make a good uh, Chester makes a good straight man for uh for Booster. Um, Comfort Bob says you can do Hangouts on your phone, but it really eats up your phone's resources. Well, I'm doing I'm kind of doing Hangouts right. Well, not Hangouts, but um, uh, this is uh, Stream Stream Labs. Stream Labs? Yeah, Stream Labs. Um, but I, I have Hangouts on my phone, but I can't initiate a, a, a Hangout session on my phone. I, I can join a Hangout session with my phone, but myself for my stream, I couldn't start a hangouts on my phone and then invite other people they, they, it doesn't it doesn't allow that so that that's my that's my problem I would like to be able to do that but I can't Sorry, got to cover up Ruth's face here for a second. Start filling this stuff in by her collar.
Call Book Bob says, all right, I got work in six hours, time for sleep. Catch you all tomorrow night. Okay, Call Book Bob, thank you for hanging out and showing up and spending time with us and just uh, keeping all of us company, all of us insomniacs. We appreciate it. Mock Truck says, okay, Call Book Bob, have a good, good one. It's cool to catch up. Yes, it's very cool to catch up. And again, I appreciate all you guys choosing to spend your time here to do so. Oh, man, look at this. See my pencil? See that? Watch. Boink. There's nothing left. <laughs> Enough to grab. There you go. I gotta sharpen this thing. It's gonna get a little more. Not much. Maybe I can sharpen it this way. Cool thing about these pencils is that you take the back end off like that it's a pencil sharpener <laughs> that way it's, it's never one far away there it is look at that good as new how sharp that is if only my mind were sharp if only on there. A little more light, a little more light.
Uh, I stand up for a second because I'm going to start. But, uh, oi. Nab it. Oh. Oi. How long has this been going on? Uh, Pablo Romero Art says, looking good. Thanks, Pablo Romero. Uh, it's been uh, almost three hours, two hours and 46 minutes. So, it's going to keep on going. I just need to stand up so I can get a better perspective on what I'm doing. I've been drawing this whole thing sitting down, and it, it kind of hurts the artwork because standing up right now, I can see how much it's distorted, but there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, I'm not, it's, it's just that it's at an angle. Um, when I'm drawing it on my table, that it, it distorts it a fair amount. It's uh, it's wider than it should be. It should be narrower. And I can see that standing up. And that's unfortunate. But learn from your mistakes. Next time, I'm going to be standing up. I'm not standing up drawing it, but I'm going to be taking. I'm going to stand up on a regular basis and look at it because. Uh, Again, your perspective just gets skewed when you are not. We we don't take enough. Um, when you don't have enough distance away from the artwork, your your perspective gets skewed. It's like those uh those street paintings, they're done at like at weird perspectives. When you stand far enough away from it, it, it you see what it's supposed to look like. It's, it's kind of the same thing. So. Uh, you live and learn. You live and learn. And hopefully over time, you become a better artist as a result. That is the goal. That is the goal. Hopefully, if Ruth Wilson happens to see this one day, she won't be mad at me. <laughs> it's like, you should have stood up more. Got a better perspective on how my head looks. <laughs> sorry, Miss Wilson. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Um... Uh, yeah, she'll give me that look. Seriously. It's like, really? You drew me looking like this? <sighs> really? Luckily, she only plays a psycho psychopathic killer. She's not actually one. Otherwise, I would be worried. Because she, some, some actors ha are able to give certain looks that are like just kind of scary <laughs> when you see them on screen. And she's, she's one of them. It's like, you do not want to make Ruth Wilson mad. She'll give you that school mom glare. <laughs> Paul Romero R says, well, you don't really know that. What, that she's not a serial killer? She could be. I don't know. She could be a genius serial killer who kills people on each location, but they never find the bodies, and they never actually know the person's been killed. That's how good she might be. So you never know. So I would rather not find out the hard way.
Actually, looking at this now, you know who this reminds me of? Reminds me of Christy Alley. <laughs> Which isn't necessarily bad, but, um, you know, Christy Alley, no, I don't know. Chris, mm. I mean, that's another person I can draw to, because Christy Alley is another person who has a really interesting look to her. Of course, I, I would probably draw a young Christy Alley. Um, instead of modern Christy Alley. Christy Alley, I mean, for those of you who never saw her when she was young, she was hot. Um, smoking hot. But, yeah, unfortunately, her diet got the better of her. But yeah, uh, actually, she, yeah, she, 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 she still has the potential to be hot. It's just, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you look at Christy Alley back in, what was it, Star Trek? Was it The Wrath of Khan? Star Trek II, the movie? As When she played a Vulcan? It's like, wow. Christy Alley was hot. It's funny that she was married to one of the Hardy Boys. I always found that very... Very interesting. Parker Stevenson. Whatever happened to him? I guess he, like, I don't know what happened to him. I think I've seen him in maybe like one thing over the years since the Hardy Boys. Did, did he go into directing or something? I don't, I have no idea. He like, just, he just sort of disappeared off the face of the planet. <laughs> oh no! No, that's 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 not good. <laughs> Pablo, <laughs> Pablo Romero speculates that she ate him. I don't think I don't think that's true. I don't think she ate him. Um, but uh, yeah, he kind of disappeared. And, but I know his the um, Sean Cassidy, the guy uh, the guy who played his brother on the Hardy Boys. Um, he went he went into the directing, I think. Yeah, he did. Directing and producing shows. So, um... I think he's still he's still around Hollywood. He's still involved. He's just behind the scenes. I, I just don't know if, uh... If Parker Stevenson sort of did the same thing. He may have. See, 456 now. Or where Pablo is, it's 556. It's almost 6 a.m. So, this has been almost four hours now? Is it? Wait, it started, it started at 2. 2 to. No, no, almost 3 hours. 2 to 5 is 3 hours. Doi. Got my. Got my time zones mixed up.
Oh, Sticky Art Channel's here. How you doing? Um, good seeing you. I just finished an Area 51 art collab project. It's huge. 30 artists. Wow, that is that is big. So are you guys actually at Area 51 currently, right now, drawing with 30 other artists in a collaboration that's live streaming? Are you doing that? That's fantastic. That's very cool. I haven't seen you around here. If this is your first time here, Sticky Art Channel, I hope that you choose to subscribe to my channel. I do live streams every few, a few times every week, maybe sometimes more, and uh, I also post uh, pre-made videos, and uh, yeah, it's good seeing you here. Hope you give this video a thumbs up if you like the art. That's cool. Ah, dagnabbit. All right, this, uh, this lead is dead. <laughs> is officially shrunken down to zero. This is all that's left of my lead. That's it. So I'm gonna have to get a new one. New lead, new lead from the pencil. Got to hold on for a second, folks. Liked and subbed, oh man, that's awesome. Thank you very much, Sticky Art Channel. You are a cool person. Not, and not just because you like my channel, but also because you went, you did an Area 51 collab with 30 other artists. You drew characters invading, much safer and fun. Okay, cool. I don't know if it's more fun, though. I, I, would, I would suspect that actually drawing at Area 51 would be more fun, because then you would have aliens and soldiers surrounding you while you drew. That would be more fun to me. Although, if they, if they start beaming people up for experimentation, that would be less fun. Uh, let me see. This this is uh this is the new leads I got. June gold. That's thirty six refills, which is quite a quite a lot. Um, but uh, unfortunately they're 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 also shorter than the standard uh lead. See, this pencil's this big, and the leads are this big. So usually they're about the same length as the as the barrel of the pencil. But these are a little shorter, so I go through them a little faster. Luckily, with thirty six of them, I got enough. I got enough. Stick it back in my jar, my pencil jar, and then. Um, Sticky R says, but no one invaded. Ah, oh well, that's okay. Maybe next time. Um, he said, that's a neat pen. It's not a pen, actually. It's, it's actually a, um, a pencil. It's a lead holder. So this is, this is a graphite lead. They come in different, um, hardnesses. Hard, hardnesses. Is that a word? I guess so. Um, this is an HB. Basically a number two pencil lead. And then you just press the back. The jaws open up like that. And then you just... Slide it, up, up. you slide it, up, up. you slide it, oh my eyes, there we go, you slide it in there, just slide it in there, and then let go, and bam, you're, you're all set, you're all set to draw, you to draw, like that, um, Sticky Art Channel says, love your style render, oh thank you very much, yeah, it's, um, it's basically just hatching and scratching, um, I mean, if you, if you zoom in, you probably see, yeah, it's a mechanical pencil. If you zoom in, I mean, you can see it's basically just lines layered on top of each other. I find it less messy doing actual lines than um, when I, um, oops, sorry, let me zoom out again. Right, zoom in, zoom in, zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. It's not working. Um, Paul Romero R says, I have one of those pencils. Cool. Yeah, they're great pencils. I mean, I've had this one. Have I had this since college? No, not, probably not. I think I've had it for at least 15 years. I mean, I've had it for a long time. So, and they're great pencils. The reason I like it is because I, I, would, I would always use number two pencils, but then you have to sharpen them. And as you sharpen them, they get smaller. And because they get smaller, you have less to grip. So, with mechanical pencils, because you only have to swap out the, the leads and not the actual pencil itself, 
you don't have that problem. It makes it very easy. And uh, I don't have to worry about trying to draw with a pencil this big. Oops, sorry, this big. <laughs> I forgot I zoomed in. This big. And uh, you know, trying to get a grip on it to draw. Um, so let me zoom out so you guys can see. I apologize. Um, Sticky Arts channel says, looks clean, but geometric and natural at the same time. Oh, thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's kind of the, the look I, I, I want. I'm, tr I'm trying to... I want, it, I want it to be geometric in a, in, a, in, a, in a sense be geometric, but not... There we go. I'm zooming out. Oh, yes, finally. Whew. It worked. Success. Um, but also, so that when you look at it, at least from a distance, it doesn't look geometric. It, it, it all sort of flows together into a, into a complete picture, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. I'm excited to be giving back to the art community. Yeah, that's cool. That's awesome. I love to draw, so I'm very fortunate to be able to do it for a living. All right, let me get back into this. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Let's see here. Check the chat. Um, to get our channel says.
Cool. Looks like the uh, the stream's back up and running. <laughs> Sorry about that. My my uh my Wi-Fi does it every once in a while. It goes it goes a little kablooey. How Romero R says I'm in full panic mode. Okay. Just, just calm down. Calm down. Um. Sticky Art Channel says cool. Yeah. Well, hopefully you like this illustration. Sticky Art Channel. Kabloom. Ah, oh, someone left. Only four people left in the chat. That's sad. You made Ruth Wilson sad by leaving. Mm. All right, let me get back to finishing Ruth. 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 Ruth Wilson. Let me see here. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. All right. I've got a... Hmm. I'll do that. Let's see. And I'll do this. That looks, that looks okay. Then I'll do this. Stick our channel says a lot came in and left, but yeah, to enter all you have to do is comment before 9.30. Okay. Yeah, well check out Sticky Art Channel's channel. And, uh, See what it's all about. I I'll, I'll have to do that myself after the live stream. See what's what. See what's happening. Excuse me. Pardon me. Um, I messed up. I did. I mess up. Partially messed up. I partially messed up. Not completely messed up. I can correct this. We can rebuild it. Better. Stronger. Faster. Right. Let's try not to smear her. That would be bad. You don't want to smear Miss Wilson. Let's see. Uh, stick it our channel says sharing and appreciate it. Oh, I missed some stuff. Sorry. Oh man, I'm okay. One entry per video comment. On my last streams, I also had connection issues. Funny thing is that. Oh, Pablo Romero R says on my last streams, I also had connection issues. Funny thing is that internet usually works well, but it decided to fail when I was streaming. Yeah, that always happens. It's <laughs> it's Murphy's law. Um. Things, it's almost a requirement. If you're streaming, the, the internet connection has to go wacky. 
uh, Sticky Art Channel says, I want to make it fair, but also make it possible for me to do more giveaways, so I need help. Sharing and appreciate it. I need, I need, I need help sharing and, and appreciate it. Sticky Art Channel says, is that HB2? It's gray. Um, this is HB. Yes, it's, it's an HB pencil. Yes. Or pencil lead, rather. Um... Sticky Art Channel says, I'm exhausted. Is it late for everyone? 2 a.m. where he is. Yeah, it's uh, 5.15 where I am. A.m. And Pablo Romero Art says it's uh, 6 a.m. where he is. And I think that's... You said it's in Argentina, you said, Pablo? So... Yeah, it is. It is late at night. I think the only... I think Mark Trafford, who lives in... Uh, Australia. Australia or New Zealand? I'm not sure. I can't remember. But uh, for him, it is uh, it is probably 5, I think it's 7 o'clock Saturday night where he is. Hey, Sticky Art Channel, you have a great night. Take care. Get some sleep. Get some rest. Thanks for showing up. I really appreciate it. Pleasure meeting you. You have a great day. And I'm gonna, I'll check out your channel afterwards. Uh, See see your uh, collaboration and also that giveaway you, you talked about. Sounds very cool. Sticky Art Channel says, uh, you too. Check out Billy Collab Project. Will be posted tomorrow. I took down live streams. Okay. Not sure what you meant by check out Billy, but I'll, I'll, I'll maybe, it's, maybe it's a, uh, video on your channel. Oh you, took, oh, you took down live streams. They were getting dislikes from haters. What the heck? Why? That's weird. I'm trying to think. Of, have I ever gotten any dislikes? I think I've gotten like... I think I've gotten like one dislike. And I've done a lot of live streams. Who, who, why, why would you be getting haters on your drawing channels? Uh, you drawing live streams. That makes... That's weird. Billy... Uh, because people only wanted live at Area 51 even though... Oh, okay. Ah, oh, okay. People were mad. What the heck? 20 dislikes and 5 likes? That's crazy. Because you did you did a drawing collaboration about Area 51, but you weren't actually at Area 51. So people are mad because they assumed it was going to be live and they would see aliens uh, doing uh, anal probes on people. And they were just mad because they, they didn't see the anal probes they were looking for. That's kind of messed up. That's kind of messed up, Sticky Art Channel. I will, I will go to your channel and I will like that video. Just in defiance of those jerky jerks who gave it thumbs down. So. Yeah, I think that whole Area 51 thing is kind of funny, actually. <laughs> I mean, I, it, personally, this is just me personally, I, I kind of hope they have aliens there. I really, I, inside, I, I, I really, really hope they have, like, really cool alien stuff in there and that aliens exist. Um, so, um, but I, I just find the whole thing uh, with... Uh, <laughs> storming Area 51 to be hilarious. Um, I mean, I, I think I think only only a hundred people actually showed up out of the mil 
you know, over a million people who signed that sort of petition or declaration that they were going to go, because it's just, you know, it's just, it's all in good fun, I guess. But yeah, generally, it's not it's not a good idea to uh, to plan to storm military facilities. I heard I I hear that the military have guns and weapons, and uh, if you're going to be storming a military facility, probably storming a military facility that has alien technology inside is probably the last place you want to storm. I'd r much rather storm a facility where the technology is doesn't involve lasers, disintegrator beams, um, I don't know, mutant uh, hybrids um, concocted in some weird laboratory in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that would, uh, you know, uh, alien soldiers, clones. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to storm a place filled with that sort of stuff, so... Pablo Romero Art says, Elliot and Brian also had someone, like, angry because of that on Paranormals, apparently. What? Really? I'm mad about what? I don't understand. That, it wasn't actually Area 51. Um, Sticky Art Channel says, so I'll post a recap tomorrow, fresh, not live. It came out better than I thought it would. Okay, cool. Neat. Neat, neat, neat. Neato. Let me, uh, all right, need more light on the subject, so let me see what I'm doing. All right, uh, now, the hair. I love hair, but I hate hair. I have a love-hate thing with hair, drawing hair. I really admire people who can draw hair really well. I can't really. So I just kind of, it's a lot of, I, I, what, the main thing I've learned about hair, drawing hair, is that, that I'm, I'm talking about just drawing it in portraits like this, is part of what makes hair look like hair is what I guess what you, you would call it random order. Um, I've given up trying to draw every strand of hair exactly as it's placed because it, I can't do that. I'm not. I can't do it. I'm. I'm not that anal and photo. You know, photorealistic with my illustrations. Um, I guess I could be. There are people out there who do that sort of stuff. I'm just not one of them. And it doesn't really matter because no one's seeing the original photograph that I am drawing from, and they're not checking to make sure every hair is in place. So I've learned that just sort of getting the the rough image of it and putting in random hairs that may not match exactly create the illusion that it's believable or credible or whatever phrase you want to use it makes it look more like hair when it's when it's just random instead of planned a lot of times so The randomness helps sell the illusion. Because hair is generally random. Ah, uh, Paul Hey, you have a good night, Sticky Art Channel. Take care. Paul Romero Arts says, uh, photorealism is cool, but it's kind of useless. If you want photorealism, just take a picture. Yeah, I mean, I I do appreciate a really, really great photorealistic drawing. I mean, I've seen some artwork on Instagram that blows my mind in, in terms of the photorealism, and I love looking at it. But um, that's just not... This is just not me. I mean, if I could get to a point that I could do that, um, that would be great. But I, I have no real interest in doing it. I mean, I, I, I want to I capture people's likenesses 
as closely as possible, and, and the closer I can get to it, definitely the better for me, because it, 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 would, it would mean my hand-eye coordination is getting better and improving, and that's, that's the main thing for me. I, 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 I mean, all, all this stuff that, like this, it's just, this is practice for me, I'm not, because I, I, I want to improve my hand-eye coordination, my ability to, to look at an image and transfer what I see to the page. That, that's my goal. Um, but for it to be 100% photorealistic, I, that's not, that's not that really that important to me. Um, as much as getting the, the, I don't know how to put it, because I want it to be photo, I want it to be realistic, I want it to look like the person, but I don't, I'm not hung up on it being photorealistic. I don't want people to, to mistake this as, for a photograph. Um, I want them to know that as a drawing. By looking at it, I just want it to be an accurate drawing. I think I think that's what I mean. I want people. To, I want I want to be able to create an accurate drawing. Now I'm roughing out stuff. Let's see. Um, all right, that's better. Yeah, it is still within the screen. Ah. Sorry. Sorry, I'm going to cover up her face again so I can get, get the hairs in. Um, now, how do I want to do this? That's right. Pablo Romero Art says, I also like realism, but it takes too much time, and also my, my, my followers don't seem to like that, so I pretty much never practice realism. Yeah, I have to practice realism, because if I don't, um, my comic book art suffers. I found that if I don't practice drawing from life, 
drawing real people, um, I, I, I lose my skill at, um, at drawing sort of fake realism, the comic book art suffers. Um, I, over time, it, it um, because I, I just, um, I want, like I said, I want to be, I want to be a better artist, and I, I find the best way for me to do that is to, is to not neglect drawing re real people, um, especially since, since I, 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 you know, most of my art tends to be, most, of, most of my, my jobs tend to be drawing superheroes uh, for companies and stuff. If I don't practice drawing real people. Pretty soon, not pretty soon, but you know, over the course of months, years, um, my, my when I want to draw sort of more realistic characters, I I, I found that that I, that I I wasn't able to do it as well as I wanted to. So I I, I found that you know taking figure drawing classes. Um, not classes, but going going to figure drawing sessions and uh, just just drawing, doing things like this, you know, drawing people out of magazines and trying to trying to draw them as well as I can within a certain time period. It helps it helps me a lot. Um, every and especially it helps with me being able to draw things, everything from expressions to um, you know, knowing how how the human body is able to to stand, move, you know, how especially how to draw women. Um, it's, it's really helped, um, you know, what, what, what expressions may look appealing on women, which, what expressions don't, um, I don't, uh, I don't really find, see a downside in me drawing from life, I only, I, I've only seen benefits, so, and I, and I enjoy it, I, I, I really enjoy drawing from life, so, um, I'm gonna keep doing it, I mean, if you, if you, if you can do your art without it, that that's cool. I, I I find that I can't. I I I I, I miss. Well, one I miss doing it, and two, my art does tend to deteriorate without it. it it's it's almost it's like it's like practicing when 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 you're in a sport. I mean, if I don't if you don't practice, you know your 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 ability to play it isn't. Isn't optimum. I want to be. I want to be optimum. I want to be Optimus Prime. <laughs> Paul Romero R says, but I will try someday to get better at it. I have an idea for a comic that I want to do in a realistic style, like painting. Oh well, that's a lot of work. A painting style. That's realistic. Wow. I mean, me just drawing. With a pencil, it takes long enough. Me painting an entire comic book, that would take me a long time. I ain't no Alec Ross. I ain't no Alex Ross. Some people can do it though, like uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Zach Bradley. I mean, if you if you haven't checked out Zach Bradley's World of, of Golma, you should. It's on Indiegogo and it's on sale right now. But Zach Bradley is a fantastic artist. He does painting, painterly style. Um, he does it on a, on a computer, and he is really, really fast. Really admire his speed, his ability to uh, to do rendered, fully rendered artwork in a short amount of time. Amazing stuff. I wish I had that skill, but again, it takes practice. And, uh, you know, a desire to improve. So, like anything else, just got to practice and want to want to get better. And hopefully you will. You will, you will, you will. What time is it? It is 5.30 right now. 5.30. Eastern Standard Time. Your mileage, your mileage may vary. Let's see. Ah, okay. It's like, where am I? What am I doing? Why am I here? All right, let me get these locks of hair on Miss Wilson.
Haha, <laughs> Paul Romero R says, I want to be Megatron. I want to be Megatron. Um, it will be digital painting. I'm all for that real painting. Yeah, me too. I mean, digital painting, I, I, I would have to because it's just, I'm so messy and clumsy. It would never, it would be, it would be a disaster. A disaster. So, digital painting, I, I, I'm so thankful for, uh, for digital art because you're able to, you're able to do the stuff that, well, I'm able to do stuff that I would never be able to do. Well, rarely would not be inclined to do um, with uh, traditional media. So just because of the difficulty or the mess. So digital, digital art has been a boon for many artists. Allowing them to, uh, to indulge their inner, inner Michelangelo's and Raphael's. Leonardo's and Donatello's, their inner Ninja Turtles. Okay, almost done. Almost there, folks. <laughs> um, Carl Romero Art says, I tried watercolors a couple of times, but it was too, it's too much work. What I like is colored pencils, so I might try to do a comic book colored pencil someday. Yeah, it's, um, well, I, th I think anything you try is a lot of work. It's just, um, just a matter of getting a handle on it, mastering it to a certain extent, then it becomes easier. Um, I mean, watercolor, I just, again, I mean, I, 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 it's a lot of work because you have to be patient. You have to be willing to uh, let the um, let the colors do what they're going to do, but also know how to work them so that they sort of go in a direction you want them to go in. Um, and that takes, that takes time and practice. Um, I've never put in the time and practice to, to do it, so, that, so I can appreciate anyone who, who does that sort of stuff. It's cool. Um, what do I prefer to work in? I mean, I, I mean, obviously pencil, but um, I like color pencils. I, I, I work with markers a lot in college because um, this is before computers were really used for uh, for drawing. Um, so most of my work, most most of my projects were were done in markers. So I, I spent a lot of time drawing, even when I first started freelancing. Um, all my assignments I drew with markers and um, but once the once the computers became sort of uh, 
sort of, you know, very, very commonplace, I, I just started doing all my artwork on the computer. So, um, I haven't worked with markers in <laughs> years, years. I mean, my marker skills are probably non-existent now. I would have to start from scratch to, um, to sort of re-hone them, relearn them. Um, and, uh, yeah, anyway, if you look at artists like uh, 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 Art Adams, not Art Adams, sorry, my, my brain, um, Adam Hughes, Adam Hughes and uh, Mark Brooks and uh, Art Germ, they use markers a lot in their work, and they combine them with their uh, with the computer skills. So um, it's, uh, I mean, it's, I mean, it's really, really cool stuff. I mean, you can do so much cool stuff just by mixing medias. Um, yeah, whatever media, like natural media, traditional media you use, mixing that with computer, you can do some fantastic artwork. So, a lot of, so many fantastic artists out there. So, uh, it's, it's great. A lot of people learn from. Ah, uh, let's see. Two people left. Looks like everybody went to bed. Well, that, that's fine. I mean, this is almost finished, so why shouldn't it? Why shouldn't I go to bed? I hope to go to bed in a few minutes too. Hopefully, I'll get some time to spend with my wife when she goes to work. <laughs> huh. Everything's dropping. Everything is dropping. Huh. Even my drawing tools are tired. It's starting to fall off my desk. All right. I think that's it. Matt Kimball's here. What the heck? How you doing, Matt Kimball? Good seeing you. <sighs> Matt Kimball says it's looking great. Thank you very much. We're at the tail end of this drawing. It has been, what time is it? It's uh, 5.43. I've been drawn for three hours and 42 minutes. So that's not too bad, not too bad. I, want, I planned on trying to finish this in two hours. So I'm a little over, but I've done worse. I've done worse jobs of illustrating. And uh, taking a lot longer. So. But I think this is finished. I just scroll out, stand up, take one final gander at it, make sure it's eh. It ain't perfect. It ain't perfect, but. 
I'm not getting paid. And this ain't this ain't the Mona Lisa. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Um I'll try to do better next time. Paul Romero R says, excellent work. Thank you very much, Pablo. I'll try to improve with each drawing. Improve my speed, improve my observational skills, and improve my actual drawing skills. That is, that is the ultimate goal. Just keep getting better and better, and to not get worse and worse. I find that if I take a break from drawing, or doing these drawings, these uh, sort of sketches, um, for too long, my, my, my ability to, to draw really suffers. So I got I, I to gotta keep doing these on a fairly regular basis. Her mouth is still bothering me. <laughs> this is why I try not to look at my art for too long, because I start to see all the mistakes. It's like, ah, why would I do that? They have to resist messing with it too much and then making it look even worse. So I'm going to stop drawing right now. Even though I really, really want to keep drawing. I really want to keep... Ah. Ah. Anyway. Ah. Come on. If anything else, one, one last pass. Visual pass. Anything else I need to change? Correct? Improve? That's good enough. Anyway, I'm going to sign it. Once I sign it, it's done. It's official. There we go. What's, what's the date today? Today it's the 21st? There we go. Bam. Right there. Ah. There you have it. Ruth Wilson. I apologize, Miss Wilson, in advance. Hopefully, you like this drawing. I tried to do you justice. I apologize if it's not perfect. I'll try to do better. Um, Matt Kimball says, yeah, I came by once at start to drop off a light, but I was in some other stream at the time and couldn't hang out to watch. Matt Kimball says, great, man. Super realistic. Well, thanks. Um, yeah, I, I think like all artists, we, uh, <laughs> what? It's the best, <laughs> oh gosh, it's the best Ruth Bader Ginsburg I ever saw. You're cruel, Matt. You're so mean. So mean. She is now, ah, oh, she looks so much better than Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Ah, oh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, man. I apologize, uh, Ruth Wilson. She, uh, it, I, I didn't say that. Matt Kimball did. Um, anyway, you guys, thank you all for hanging out with me, spend time with me, making my evening much better. Um, hope you guys have a great weekend, great Saturday. Again, tomorrow, or today, actually. Um, this evening, I'm going to be on Hope Fire's live stream at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be drawing some characters from her webcomic. So stop by Pope Fire's channel on YouTube. Um, but I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you guys later. Okay? If you haven't already, please hit the bell for notifications, subscribe to my channel, give this thumb video a thumbs up, and uh, also, remember, I take commissions, so I do um, drawings like this. Or, also, um, if you want me to draw a character, superhero, fictional character you like, just contact me. All my contact info is in the About section of this channel. So, you guys take care. Hope you have a great night. Santa Raven, you have a fantastic evening. I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.